Welcome to the Science Asylum. I am Nick Lucid. <laughs> Ow. Sorry, my teleporter seems to be broken again. This does not bode well. Anyway, I'd like to address a deceivingly simple question. What exactly is free fall? Cause I'm free! Free fallin'! As with most things, whether or not you call something free fall is a matter of definition. We'll start this video with the basic physical definition. An object is in free fall if and only if its motion is limited to the following conditions. Gravity is the only force acting on it, and it is only moving up and down. Science likes its definitions to be specific. Wait, did you say up? Why yes. Yes, I did. It's a common misconception that the word fall implies down. But this skateboarder is in free fall on his way up and down. Because gravity doesn't really care which way you're moving. <laughs> Again? Really? Okay, so let's further limit ourselves to ordinary experience. You and I will likely spend our entire lives here on the Earth. Oh, no, 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 no. We all know you've been to space, Milton. Quit bragging. Anyway, down here, gravity pretty much affects everything the same everywhere. A typical physics teacher would quote a number like 9.8 meters per second squared. That's an acceleration, or how fast your speed changes as you fall. In this case, that's 9.8 meters per second per second. Now, meters per second is great for scientists, but you probably don't have an instinct for it. Depending on where you live, you need either miles per hour or kilometers per hour. 9.8 meters per second is about 22 miles per hour, or 35 kilometers per hour. So what this means is you gain 22 miles per hour for every second that you fall. For some perspective, in one second you fall about 16 feet, or one and a half stories. This is why people can die from a three-story fall. You're hitting the ground at 44 miles per hour! This 22 miles per hour per second is the same for everything everywhere on the Earth. What, you don't believe me? Watch this. Racquetball? Smiley face guy. If I release these two things at the same time, they should follow each other all the way down. Pew. Captain George? Kitty. Same time. Pew. iPhone? Jetta. Same time. Pew. Check mate. What? Do it with a piece of paper? Racquetball? Paper. Yeah, I know it's pink. Deal with it. Same time. Uh, uh. Okay, so maybe not everything. We have this annoying thing called air. It's always making everything so complicated. Air resistance is a force other than gravity. So we could just say the paper isn't in free fall. But don't all of those things fall through the air? Crap, you're right. I guess it's time to relax our definition a little. Skydivers deal with air resistance all the time, and we still say they're in free fall. Technically, they're not even falling straight down because when they started moving, they were on the plane. Ah! Ah! This is getting old real fast. There are three factors that increase the air's influence. A smaller weight, a larger surface area, and a longer fall time. We can't increase the paper's weight, so let's reduce its surface area. Racquetball, crumpled piece of paper. Same time. If you fall long enough, you reach something called terminal, terminal velocity. velocity. For a human skydiver, that's about 120 miles per hour, as long as they're falling like this, with their arms and legs stretched out. If you orient yourself a little differently, you can go a little faster. At the filming of this video, the record is held by Felix Baumgartner, who broke the sound barrier with a maximum speed of 834 miles per hour, or Mach 1 and a quarter, and he fell for almost four and a half minutes. Luckily, most of the stuff we see fall is heavy enough, small enough, or only falls for a fraction of a second. So we ignore the air most of the time. So what if you're not stuck on the Earth? That's a very good question. To find out, let's go into space. Here goes nothing. Oh, crap. Not good. Uh-oh. Somebody help me. Stop it. Okay, here we are. Space. And there's the Earth down there, just chilling. The defined edge of the atmosphere is right about here, about 62 miles up. Now that 22 miles per hour per second we mentioned earlier is only the acceleration due to gravity up to about here, which is 20 miles up. Beyond that, it starts to noticeably shrink in value. Now the International Space Station orbits here at about 257 miles, give or take. Astronauts don't get very far these days. Up there, gravity is a little over 19 miles per hour per second, so not much smaller. Astronauts are not weightless. They're just falling around the Earth at the same rate as the station, so they don't notice their weight any more than a skydiver does. You might be wondering where the moon is in this picture. It doesn't even fit in view because it's this far away. 
That's about 240,000 miles. Out there, gravity is six one thousandths of a mile per hour per second which still isn't zero. Don't forget, the Earth still holds on to it all the way out there. This number might seem really small, but then it takes a whole month to go around the Earth, so it kind of makes sense. Okay, now we're back. I actually prefer to travel by teleport when it's working. So convenient. I tend to avoid planes and would only skydive if my life depended on it. Would any of you skydive? Let us know in the comments section. And if you already have, please share your experience. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy.